Amitav Ghosh is joining me from here in Washington. He is a space scientist working on NASA Mars missions since 1997. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, we just saw how space technology is being used in land conservation in China. Is this becoming a more common practice? What do you make of it? So I think this is an interesting offshoot. I don't think space technology always has to benefit um, conservation. Um, so I think this is an interesting um, offshoot of what's happening. Let's go above the Earth for a moment. China plans to increase its number of launches in 2021. This year, more than 40 launches could take place. What do you think China hopes to achieve by that? Is, is this building on their space station goals as well? Right. So this is a very interesting question. So if you look at the global picture, so NASA came, NASA came into this business probably in the 60s. Um, China um, has come in late, but is scaling up very fast. So it has made, made huge progress. And um, here's the backdrop. Very few countries really have the ability to go to space. And so um, other than US, Russia, um, and maybe Japan, very few people have the capability. In that context, if you see uh, Changa, one, two, three, four, five, um, the moon missions executed flawlessly, and the space station, and the number of launches, and the launch vehicles have developed over the years, um, China has made huge, huge progress. But um, if you look at it another way, um, so that is the good. Um, the sobering thing is China is still where America was 50 years ago. So it has not been able to um, develop human-rated launch vehicles to go to um, the moon, for example, or uh, a manned mission to Mars. So, so, so that technology stays. Um, China will have this in maybe 2030, and the U.S. had it in 1970. So, um, and, and there's another huge difference between China and the U.S. See, NASA, Chinese space program, which are all taxpayer-driven efforts, uh, are limited in their capability, I feel, in the long run. In the U.S., you have the fledgings of a um, space industry, a private space industry, led by two of the richest people in the planet, um, who think that it's their goal to make life uh, interplanetary. And so SpaceX and Blue Origins are changing the game. And so that is one part perhaps China is still still has to catch up on. Maybe. Well, you make the interesting point about where they compare when it comes to the moon. Um, but if you can, I want you to address two things. China's recent mission to the moon and one that is still ongoing, which is, uh, you know, where they landed on the far side of the moon with that rover. And I mean, that's really something that hasn't been done at all. So what do you make of, of that? That is huge. I mean, what you just mentioned, they, they landed on the dark side of the moon uh, where there's no light. And and, and the, and the night time, surviving the lunar night is one of the greatest technical challenges. Um, so, so because, you know, it is it gets to minus, uh, maybe minus 250 degrees Kelvin, uh, sorry, centigrade, and then it continues for 14 nights. And so they have mastered that. So yes, they have made huge, huge uh, strides. And the, even the sample return mission, which happened in uh, December, and I think in 21 days, uh, Chang'e 5 got back samples. That's huge. And um, so so uh, you're absolutely right on the unmanned spacecraft, um, uh, unmanned robotics spacecraft arena. Uh, China is doing excellently well.